Reduction procedure for the lack of positions, which we can prove in certain cases, um, in the special case of pre symplectic realization, um, everything is centripetal. But then we can imagine, uh, hopefully, operated for more general statement, only within the reaction, which we can prove by standard uh, different So let me start by uh, a brief overview. Of this. Um, uh, explaining this construction in a very special case, uh, and then we'll uh, to, to more general uh, derived reductions. So um, we start with a basic setup of a Lie group G acting on a symplectic manifold with a moment map mu to the dual of the Lie algebra, so basic stuff. And for a point C. In the dual of the Lie algebra, we have symplectic reduction of C, which you take the free image of C on the moment map and mod out by the stabilizer subgroup at C. So, one of the questions I want to address is how to make sense of this if you replace S and X by not a point, but it's a manifold of the dual of the Lie algebra. Reduction at level S for S is a manifold of the dual algebra. Well, one obvious thing you can do is just take the pre image of S under the moment map. You hope that this is a manifold and that the, the symplectic form pulls back to a form of constant, right? So you can just mod out by the kernel um, distribution uh, by the kernel of the Steve form and get something symplectic. But the point I want to argue is that. Uh, Realize much more uh, geometrically and explicitly in cases by the action of a group weight namely a subgroup weight of the cotangent group weight associated to G instead of a subgroup of G. And uh, of course now this can be uh, generalized uh, in greater generality where this cotangent group is replaced by any quasi-symplectic groupoid, and um, so this will be a Hamiltonian G-space for that groupoid. Or more generally, this can be a Dirac realization without assuming anything is integral. So that's what I want to explain. Um, there is a Dirac version. And then I want to explain uh, where this construction comes from, which was a shifted symplectic geometry. And um, yeah, so it can be interpreted as an intersection of two Lagrangians in one shifted symplectic stack, uh, something that Pavel introduced this morning. But actually the main motivation for this construction was not shifted symplectic geometry, it was to explain uh, the so-called more Tashikawa conjecture, which I want to explain next. by two physicists, Mori in 2011 at the String Math Conference. And the setup, you start with a complex reductive group. And there are a few uh, Hamiltonian spaces that you can associate to such a group. The most basic one is the contagion model. which comes with an action of G cross G by left and right translations. There's a moment map for this action. Another nice one is um, to take G cross a so-called 
Slodovy slice, a regular Slodovy slice. So that means a slice for the adjoint action of Guji on the, the set of regular elements on this algebra. So it's canonical up to conjugation, so there's a, a choice to be made, but it's uh, canonical up to conjugation. And this is, a, this is a symplectic manifold with a Hamiltonian action of the group G simply by left translation on the G factor here. Okay, so those are the two basic Hamiltonian spaces that I want to talk about. And I will think of the first one as being somehow associated to a cylinder. So I'm not saying that it's a moduli space of something of the cylinder. I'm just labeling the cotangent bundle by, by the cylinder. So, and I will label this one by the cap, so a sphere with one puncture. And the goal of the Morita Ishikawa conjecture is to extend this list of Hamiltonian spaces by associating to each close oriented surface with boundaries with sigma a Hamiltonian space depending on G which will have um, as many G actions as there are boundary components here we have two boundary components two actions and so on so there's an action of G to the number of boundaries Sorry, uh, but I mean, like, if you associate spaces to surfaces, shouldn't they be like moduli spaces of something or, or what? Uh, like maybe, but this is not how we are constructed. Uh, mm -hmm. This is taking the fixed branch of some supersymmetric quantum field theory, but there might be an interpretation in terms of, of moduli spaces that would be interesting. But, uh, somehow, uh, yeah. For now, I'm just I'm just labeling them like that. Okay, so uh, this is not just a random list, they have to be compatible in some way. So if you have two surfaces, and not construct a Hamiltonian space from it, there are two things you can do. Well, first of all, you can just glue these surfaces together along the boundary. and take the Hamiltonian space associated to that. Or uh, you can take the two Hamiltonian spaces associated to each surface. And this one has uh, three G actions. There are three boundary components. And this one has one G action. So there's a uh, big one, which you think of coming from this boundary component. And here, there's another one. And then you can do the symplectic reduction of the product of the diagonal action of G at level zero, and these two should be isomorphic. Okay, so that's the conjecture. And um, can I ask a question? Yes. The number of boundaries counts the number of actions, but the, the punctures, is there some real uh, definition? Not really. I mean, it would be different varieties if you change the genus, but. Uh, okay. The number of uh, actions stay the same. Um, yeah, so that I will explain uh, examples, and you'll see that this is a, this is quite a non-trivial statement. Because not only did the, the, they make this conjecture, they also provided a few examples. And to solve this conjecture, it suffices to know what is the pair of pants um, going. Because once you know the pair of pants and you know the cap. Um, you can glue these together with all other surfaces. And so for the pair of pants, they knew the answer for SL2C and SL3C. So this should be a Hamilton space with three actions of SL2, and it turns out it's the simplest thing you can imagine for SL2 is just you take the standard representation and take three tensor product of, uh, of them. And for SL3C, it turns out to be the closure 
of the minimal nil potent orbit in the exceptional E algebra E6. And then they didn't know any other example. So that's the reason why this conjecture was quite uh, surprising and interesting from a medical point of view. So why does E6, what does E6 have to do with SL3 and what's the pattern here? How, how do we generalize to SL3? Do you mean that the solution of this problem is unique? No, that's part of the conjecture. But uh, these were produced somehow canonically from the physical theory, so we expect that uh, they are the correct answer. Um, but it's part of the conjecture that they are unique. And this should be a functor from... Yeah, so another way of phrasing this is this is a two-dimensional topological quantum field theory that is in the <laughs> category whose uh, morphisms are Hamiltonian space. Objects are... Sorry, and if you know this uh, three-fold sphere, then we know everything. Yeah. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. It has to satisfy a few compatibility conditions to, to be a DQFT. So is there some simple way of saying what approximately the process of this association should be? Like, it's, it doesn't seem straightforward? As I said, it's the Higgs branch of uh, supersymmetric quantum field theory called the theory of class S. Yeah. Um, okay. So, sorry, you said quantum, but this should be classical, no? Because you are associating, like, black I'm manifold. You're taking the Higgs branch of this. Okay, so now uh, I want to explain the construction of Ginsberg and Cash and comparison this Construct, um, instead of focusing on the pair of pens, they construct uniformly the sphere with n boundaries. Okay. The idea is simple. The first approximation is to take the variety associated with cap. This is a Hamiltonian space. The Hamiltonian G space, and if you take n form product of it, this form of Hamiltonian G and might be an the answer, but turns out no, uh, that would be too simple. This is too big to be the case. So that would be just G n cross S. It's too big, so you have to do some kind of reduction of it, but you want to preserve the G n action, and there aren't many other D group actions on this, so you have to do another kind of symplectic reduction, which uh, they call, for good reason, symplectic reduction by a group scheme. So the idea is you take Gn cross the diagonal of this slice S, you view this as embedded in N, and this happens to be coisotropic. So it's coisotropic, you can, you can do symplectic reduction, you mod out by the space of leaves of the null position. You take the leaves of the distribution given by the symplectic orthogonal. And um, now the nice thing is that instead of being group orbits, like in standard symplectic reduction, it's group point orbits. So this, the space of leaves happen to be exactly the orbits of a group point of change. Is it delta S or delta S to the power n? Uh, this is the diagonal of S in SM. So maybe a diagonal. So it's a, uh, a group point of H on S acting on this Z over S. Uh, and it's an explicit Lie theoretic group point which can be obtained from the universal synchronizer. It's a very special case of group point where the source and target points are equal, so it's sometimes called a group scheme, but still it's a non trivial group. So that means now that this. Uh, is quotient by uh, 
Dacă aici e exactare de energie. And so when I saw this construction, I was very intrigued because well, they call it syntactic reduction by Rybowski, but it's a very ad hoc uh, example, and it's hard to imagine at first how to to do a, a, a general theory of symplectic reduction by Gupoids, which would include this uh, as a special case. So that was the, the goal of the project, and we'll see that indeed um, this can fit into a, a more general theory that one of symplectic reduction along the sun manifold, and this phase uh, set much H is simply a symplectic reduction of the cotangent bundle of Gn by the right action of Gn, where the level here is the diagonal of the of this, uh, of this slice. Would it be too distracting from your talk to recall us what is this load of slice? Um, well, it, it can be defined explicitly if you have a, an SL, SL2 triple, regular SL2 triple, you can put E plus the uh, kernel of RF. It's an affine space. And, and now we are taking this principle, right? The principle yes. SL2 triple. Yes, the regular SL2 triple. So that uh, this is this is in the regular element. So it's a, a slice for the actual. It's a global slice for the adjoint action on the set of regular elements. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's unique up to conjugation. Up to conjugation. Yes. Okay. Um, oh, also, I said that it's a partial solution because what you actually have to do is to take a GIT quotient, so taking the spectrum of each invariant functions, and you have to show that the ring. The, the, the commutative algebra of inch invariant functions is finitely generated, which couldn't be in general. So that's why the, the paper is still short and didn't quite solve the conjecture, but still the, the construction I find very interesting and motivated on this question. Okay, so let me explain the actual construction. Okay, so the starting point for reduction of this along the sum manifold is to take a base Dirac manifold, let's call it X, a phi twisted Dirac, where phi is a closed three form, and Lx is in Tx plus T star X. So this could be the dual of a Lie algebra or, or a Lie group with a Cartan Dirac plot. This is the base the construction. And let me explain the global version first, which can be proved using shifted symplectic geometry as a, an, an intersection of two Lagrangians, as I said. So the global version, you assume that this is integrable. So you take an integration. The integration, so that's a a quasi-symplectic groupoid over X, or sometimes called a twisted pre-symplectic groupoid, or in other words, a one-shifted symplectic one groupoid. In any case, there's a, a, a two-form on the top, and a three-form on the base, satisfying various uh, network compatibility conditions and non-degeneracy Also, there's the notion of a Hamiltonian G-space, due to Q. So this is an action of this groupoid on the smooth manifold, uh, such that M has a two-form, again satisfying various natural uh, compatibility and non-degeneracy conditions. Um, okay, it's quite a 
in these examples is when x is the dual of the Lie algebra, you recover the usual Hamiltonian spaces. And when x is a Lie group equipped with a Carton derived structure, then you recover quasi Hamilton. Okay, there's already a reduction uh, theory for these, uh, these things, also due to pressure. So in this uh, reduction procedure, you take x a point in the base x, and the symplectic, well not the symplectic, but the reduction of m by, by g at level x is as you would expect. You take the pre-image of x under the moment map and mod out by the isotropy group of g and x. Which is a symplectic manifold, at least if everything is nice enough to be smooth. Okay, so at the first glance, this may look like a theory of synthetic reduction by group points, uh, which include, which might include the Ginsburg and Kazan construction, but no, it doesn't work because even if we started with, with group points in the end, we're modding by an ordinary group. This is just a standard group. So we cannot recover these uh, group point quotients of Ginsburg and Kazan. So we have to look for something else, and that's where uh, reduction along a sum manifold comes in, where we change this x here for, for some manifold. Satisfy some conditions. First of all, we have to define the set, uh, the kind of sets we can uh, take in X. So we define this with Anna. We see that uh, a reduction level is a sum manifold. Such that two conditions hold. First of all, if you pull back the twisting three form to S, that should be exact. So if you have this as gamma for some gamma, and I will think of gamma as being part of the structure. But I should say that usually in, in most applications, uh, Gamma is actually zero, so we don't really think of it as an extra structure, but uh, the general statement has a gamma. And two, um, this particular subset of the, of the Dirac structure and x should have constant rank. So we take the set of pairs V alpha in Lx such that V is tangent to this submanifold S. So you can hook it with the two form gamma to get a one form. And this one form should be the same as pulling that alpha to this. So that's natural uh, subset of an X induced by this uh, reduction level, and we require that it has a constant form. So this is making the, the pullback and then a gauge transformation. Uh, by gamma, you can see it as So, the immediate consequence of this definition is that this LXS will now be a subalgebra of LX. And so you can uh, integrate it to a subalgebra, and that's the definition of a stabilizer. The 
stabilizer of S, generalizing a stabilizer subgroup for usual symplectic reduction of S is a subgroup of it G sub S and we're being very um, permissive about our uh, notion of sub objects um, it doesn't have to be injective this is just a, 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 a non, non necessarily injective immersion so in other words this has to induce a least subalgebraic but uh, um, not necessarily a sub groupoid in the sub theoretic sense so a sub groupoid like such that a um, The Lie algebra of this is this subalgebra Xs. And B, uh, there's a certain compatibility condition with this gamma. Uh, so source pullback of gamma minus target pullback of gamma should be the pullback by this not here, F of the, the two form the quasi symplectic two form. Okay, and as a, as a remark, in the special case that X is Poisson, and uh, so untwisted Poisson, this uh, notion of reduction level where uh, the gamma to be zero is exactly this notion of being pre-Poisson. And also in that case, uh, taking the source simply connected Lie group with that intelligible, B will be automatic. A result of uh, Marco and uh, new and Marco Zambos. <laughs> Basically, it means just isotropic in this sense. And uh, that's the condition we have here. Okay, so now let me state the, the theorem. <coughs> oh, and also let me say that. Um, my paper with, with Peter was about this, uh, this Poisson case. So this was studied in more details with, uh, with Peter Crooks. And then generalized uh, to Dirac. With, uh, so that's the global version. First of all, if you assume that you have all this setup, so M is a Hamilton D space, you have a reduction level, then as you would expect, this notion of reduction by S, you take the pre-image of S on the new modified by the stabilizer, and this is symplectic. It's smooth, or more, more precisely, if uh, this is a, a clean intersection and the quotient has a 
in the structure such that the map is a subversion. Um, and more generally, so if you want to recover the usual reduction procedure for quasi Hamiltonian spaces, you have to assume a little bit more. So if you have M uh, Hamiltonian G cross H space, where now you have two quasi synthetic groupoids over two Dirac manifolds, you take their product. And S still a reduction level in X, then um, this, this is now a Hamiltonian H space. Another Dirac manifold. You have two Dirac manifolds and two integration and taking the product. Remark is that if you take S to be a point, oh no, sorry, that's the remark for the infinitesimal version. So let me take the infinitesimal version now. So now you don't assume anything integrable or even pre symplectic. So you take just a general Dirac manifold in L with a Dirac realization to two Dirac manifolds X and Y. So by a Dirac realization, I mean. Uh, uh, a strong forward direct maps or forward direct maps whose kernel intersect the direct structure of trivial. So this is the infinitesimal, so infinitesimal version of these Hamiltonian G spaces. So suppose you have a general direct realization and two product of direct manifolds, and an S in um, X a reduction level. So now you don't need uh, these uh, conditions of having a stabilized with satisfying A and B. It's just um, just this uh, non degeneracy condition of a reduction level where the, the form is exact, and this has some sort of Then um, the pre image of S on the U divided by this set LXS, which is required to have constant rank. This still has an F to Y, and this is another derived realization. And the construction is, is kind of funny. You cannot just pull back and push forward the direct structure. It doesn't work. So you pull back and you modify by the, the, the two form gamma, and then you can push forward. Um, OK, so this first part here was uh, imagined using shifted synthetic geometry, but then we can um, state this one coming naturally from that one. And, and then we prove this just uh, with standard differential geometric techniques. And the remark is that if S is just a point, this already uh, appeared uh, in previous work uh, of Enrique and Man Marius in the audience. This was a, a notion of, uh, of reduction.
Uh, okay. So now let me explain the shifted symplectic interpretation. And then uh, I will explain examples <laughs> later. It's just any some manifold oh, okay. such that the full back of the three 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 form is exact and so we just not two degenerate. So this has to have constant ranking. So in the, in the Poisson case, uh, in a sense, a generic some manifold is, is uh, introduction level. There's no three 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 form. And this uh, condition of this bond on having constant rank in the part of a generic condition. But it, in the early maps, it seem to be submersions. Which maps? Like the, the Dirac realizations that you start with or end with. Um, no, not, not necessarily, no. just a, a forward Dirac map oh. whose kernel intersect there. So in the definition of a Dirac realization, you, you assume submersion, no? Uh, I assume just a forward Dirac storm. I think in the paper we didn't assume. Huh? I think we didn't assume submersion. No? This is based on um, one of the theorems in the original paper on shifted symplectic geometry by Pantev, Toen, Baki, and Zesosi. So in, this, in their paper, they, they gave three constructions of just in symplectic structures, there's a the mapping space construction, intersection of two Lagrangians, and another one uh, about uh, modulized stacks of perfect complexes. Uh, but the one I want to focus on is intersection of Lagrangians. This was mentioned by um, Pavel this morning. So if you have Z and shifted symplectic derived or it can stack. But if you don't like derived, you can, uh, for us, it will just be a, a, a differentiable stack, a Liku point of to Morita um, And you have two Lagrangians, L1, L2. And recall that uh, a Lagrangian is, is a morphism with an extra structure, not just a, a sole object. Then uh, the intersection of these two Lagrangians in the sense of derived algebraic geometry is, uh, is now n minus one shifted symplectic. So you decrease the degree by one. Okay, so now we can start uh, some kind of dictionary between differential geometric uh, objects and structures and their counterpart in shifted symplectic geometry. So suppose you have uh, just a plain. Sorry, uh, Mike said. 
Yes, I got stuck in something. So you don't assume that this is its immersion. Why does it follow that mu minus one of s is a manifold? Uh, no, it's uh, all okay. <laughs> if, when I say if smooth is including all that, I want to say yes, the clean so intersection. Right. And then the next the theorem down, down here is the same thing. Then yes. uh, the one you just uh, this one. Yes, yeah. exactly. So all the standard assumptions you use. But uh, well, in the end, it's a stack. That's what I will explain later. But, uh, if you want smooth things, you assume all the things you usually need. Um, just to make this uh, smooth. Okay, so suppose you have a, a Lebu for it. This quotient stack, the structure of a one shifted symplectic stack. Is exactly the same data that you need to say that this is Dirac and this is its integration. Uh, phi twisted. Okay, so now you have, uh, suppose you have this uh, Dirac integration and you have an action on just a plane manifold, an action of the group, the group way. And then you can consider the map of groups and stacks. Uh, sorry. N mod G has a map to X mod G, which is just a moment map. Uh, which induces that. And requiring that this has a Lagrangian structure is exactly the same as saying that this is a Hamiltonian space for this. The Lagrangian structure on this morphism in the sense of uh, Pantev to and Bakhil is the same as uh, the G space. Okay, now suppose that you have a subgroup for it, GS, with some submanifold. Then uh, the subgroup for it induces a map also which is X and not GS. And as you might have guessed, this uh, giving this, this the structure of a uh, Lagrangian is exactly the same as our notion of uh, reduction level and stabilizers. So exactly the same as seeing that this is the reduction level and GS is stabilizer. And so now as a corollary, you have that this uh, derived intersection And if you prefer differentiable stacks, uh, you just assume that the intersection of S and U is transverse, and you get an ordinary differentiable stack. Um, also, about the intersection being transverse, 
forgot to mention that, but um, in, in standard symplectic geometry, there's a familiar fact that zero is a regular value for more than that, even though the action is locally free, and, and this uh, generalizes nicely here. So this stabilizer acts on the level set locally freely, if and only if the intersection of S with mu is transverse. Okay, um, in the remaining time, I will explain a few examples in application of this uh, reduction technique. Can I just, just ask you something? Yes. So in this global theorem, I think I just got lost. So M was assumed to be, to have a two form. Yes, yes. Right. Because then I think in this theorem down here, you yeah, just did not work. Yeah, but I think then the, this reduction will be a Poisson manifold, not symplectic necessarily. Uh, yes, correct. I mean, I'm just saying that you get a bit of parallelization there. So if y is a point, then yeah. that should be taken for Okay. And also, as another remark, uh, so this is the simplest case where you just have one module, but if you have a, two actions of G and H, as we've had before, instead of that, you can construct a, a Lagrangian structure on this, uh, this quotient stack so that you can view this as a, as a um, Hamilton and H stack, uh, in, in a sense. I don't really have time to go into that. Okay, so the main, uh, the first family of examples is, as I explained at the beginning, when you have a Lie group action on a symplectic manifold with a moment to the zone of the Lie algebra, and then you can define symplectic reduction at level S for S in the dual of the Lie algebra by symplectic reduction at level S by the action of the cotangent groupoid as the on M. So this, this was studied earlier uh, with Peter Crooks. And so uh, you can play a, a bit with that. So, of course, you can you recover the standard Marsden Weinstein reduction if S is a singleton. Another uh, nice case is that the other extreme, if you take Poisson transversal, The reduction at a Poisson transversal would be just a pre-image because this uh, stabilizer subgroupoid will be trivial in that case. So you recover the fact that the pre-image of a Poisson transversal is a symplectic submanifold. Another thing you can do is just pick a Lie group and pick your favorite submanifold of the dual of the algebra. <coughs> and this produces, in a canonical way, a, a Hamiltonian G space. If you're lucky, otherwise it's just a Hamiltonian G stack. But um, in good cases, so you, uh, construction, you just take the cotangent bundle and reduce by G by right action, for example, and you reduce at S. And it, this gives you canonically a Hamiltonian G space associated with G and S. And moreover, they are somehow universal. They are universal objects for symplectic reduction in the sense that if you have want to do any symplectic reduction at level S for manifold N, this always factors through a symplectic reduction, a standard symplectic reduction at level zero of this. So if you know, if you know this space, uh, you know all other symplectic reductions. So for example, maybe you know there's a killer, killer structure of this for some reason, then you know that all these 
symplectic production at level S are also K. And that's the case that we have um, in, this sense, in the case where you take G compact and you take a, a vial chamber. Actually, you take a closed vial chamber. So this is not quite a smooth manifold, but the construction works anyway. You get a stratified space. And taking a closed vial chamber recovers the universal implosion studied by Jeffrey uh, Shamar and uh, Kimi. So, and the there's a universal property for universal implosion, which is just now a special case of, of that one. And of course, uh, if you take a complex reductive, uh, we can recover these uh, Ginsburg and Kajdan examples by taking uh, Gn and the, the diagonal of this slice, as I explained. Okay, and um, if I have time, I want to see a few interesting consequences for quasi Hamiltonian. Let's say one minute. Okay. One minute, let's see. So Maybe two. If I have a, a G cross key quasi Poisson, Hamiltonian quasi Poisson, um, then I have the notion for S, some manifold of G such that the feedback of the Carton tree form is exact, I have the notion of symplectic reduction, a quasi Hamiltonian, quasi Poisson reduction at level S, which is now a quasi Poisson K manifold, if it's smooth. And so you can, in particular, you can do a, a multiplicative version of the more Tashikawa conjecture with that by taking a, an analog of the regular Soldovy slice called the Steinbuch slice. But another interesting consequence of this definition is that um, you can do quasi-Poisson reduction by a subgroup H in, in G. So if you have a quasi-Poisson G manifold and a subgroup H, it's not necessarily a quasi-Poisson H manifold. For example, there's not even a map from G to H uh, to construct a moment map in contrast to the additive case where you have G to H to H plus my instruction. But if, um, if uh, your group satisfy a particular condition, so the Lie algebra of H satisfies this condition, so for example, this holds for H um, parabolic, in a complex semi-simple in algebra. Or also it holds, um, if, uh, for example, it's a Lagrangian subalgebra, uh, you have a, a, a Manning pair. Um, for another word, another example is max important. So this is a nice family of, of uh, subalgebras. So if you have your Lie group satisfies this, and you take an element T in H such that um, This particular condition is satisfied. So, for example, you take you can take always t to be one. Then there's a notion of quasi-Poisson reduction by H at level t because uh, we can show that t H perp, where H perp is a Lie group of Lie algebra H perp, which is a subalgebra by this uh, condition. So that will be the preimage of T H perp. By H, not by H, and this now will be quasi Poisson. Again, if everything is. And this is, the, if you do this with the additive case, uh, you recover exactly what's expected for uh, reduction by a so Okay, thank you. Uh, do, is there any relation between uh, this implosion and this uh, Slotovy slice story? Because these are kind of the wall chamber is some kind of imperfect slice, mm -hmm. yeah. and the Slotovy slice is a perfect slice. But so is there? Yeah, that's a good question. We, we thought about that, but didn't came up with anything useful to say. But yeah, there's a close relationship between. Okay. And, and if you do this multiplicative reduction with the Steinberg slice. 
Now, is it some kind of modulate phase, or, or, or what, what kind of phase? In the end, the, the story should have some, some kind of more technical uh, yeah. thing. Uh, probably, I mean, that uh, the hope, and these things are supposed to be hyper carrier also. So, mm -hmm. uh, to be hyper carrier, you have to have some kind of maybe hyper carrier quotient construction, and this has to yeah, be some kind of better. infinite dimensional hyper carrier reduction. Mm -hmm. Uh, but this is a uh, conjectural. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions, comments? I think there is nothing in the chat. No? If not, let's thank Accents again.